Hey, what's up, y'all? How are y'all doing? My name is Diamond Styles. I am the host of Marsha's Paid Podcast. Yeah, so you can check my podcast out on all streaming platforms. Today, we're going to talk about Macy Gray, Ben Mittler, Turfs, Biology, and many other things. <laughs> mm. Hey, Brittany. Hey, CL. How are you, Marissa? How are you? Hey, Bang. I'm eating a delicious ass a ripe pear, Brandon. Shay. Thank you, thank you, Marissa. Your shirt is very fine. Purple or two different colors, purple. Thank you. I'm back in my, <laughs> I call them my Maddie Moss Clarks. <laughs> They're Christian Dior, but they remind me of old school 70s Matty Moss Clark classes. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So we can get some folks time to come in. So, mm -mm 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 -mm. So how have y'all been doing? I ain't been on in a while because I've been running the streets for pride and all that kind of stuff. I wasn't prepared to hear that. No, listen. I just listened to the whole Paul's review about Dynamics in Paris. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, Kay. Yeah. It was sex. Mm. I wanted to go to the movies today, but I forgot. <laughs> hey, Joel, how are y'all doing? We are going to talk about um, Macy Gray. Bette Midler, I know y'all tired of hearing about it because it happened so earlier this week, but um, let's cover it. <laughs> um, we'll start a conversation in a couple of minutes. Um, I wanted to go to the movies today to go see Thor because I don't like too many white boys, but when I do, they are Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> So, you know, he's so fine. So I like to go see him anytime he's in a movie. Oh, and he just did a movie on Netflix called um, Spider something. Is it Spider Code or Spider? Something Spider. It's so good. Rachel Divide on Netflix. Um, I try to avoid the Rachel Dolezal conversation. I think I've seen a little bit of it, but uh, run Rachel Dolezal. There's a level of it that I feel kind of annoyed by her story, um, but I, I I can't fully articulate it because she gets on my nerves too. And it's a long. I don't know. I don't even want to get in the conversation, but there's certain parts of it that's. Um, there's certain you know, 
Yeah, it's it's kind of. I haven't I don't I haven't thought about it enough to get a fully articulated thought about it. She is ridiculous, but black people's response to her sometimes is ridiculous too. Um, I think the public response to her is there's a level of it that's kind of like whoa. <laughs> Like y'all, um, she's kind of weird. But she's weird, and there's a certain there's a certain overkill in the response. Like I don't think she should be um, not able to get jobs and take care of her children. I think that's is she delusional, sure, but I think. Totally disenfranchising her is kind of like, oh, I can't get jobs. I can't work anywhere because of this. I think that's kind of overkill to me. Now, she asked for it by her delusion, but I think it's it gets a little too extra for me, for my taste. But that's not my business. <laughs> but yeah, I, I try to avoid. Um, and then, you know, of course, they had this. There's always this weird conversation about trans, um, if 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 folks can be transgender and gender is a construct, why folks can't be transracial since racial is a construct? And that whole rabbit hole of bullshit, I don't wanna I just don't entertain her and that that whole thing. That's so silly. What I have been watching, what I watched today, is it today? Was it today or last night? No, last night. Last night, I watched The Girl in the Picture. Did y'all watch that? Yeah, that just came out. The Girl in the Picture is too much. I think it just came out. I was like, it was all just too much. The Girl in the Picture, it's on Netflix. Maybe I'll do a live about it. Should I do a live about that? I don't know. Maybe. The girl in the pictures, baby. Oh, it is so extra. So extra. It's it just um so much. It was in Texas. What was in Texas? That that story spans across multiple places. <laughs> that story spans across Florida, Kentucky, Georgia, Alabama, Texas. It, the story goes a lot of places. New Orleans. Yeah, the girl in the pictures was really good. Really, really good. It's one of those, you know, true crime series that, that you like, oh, wow, this is a fucked up story. And then it, another plot twist, and you like, wow. Then another plot twist. What? Then another plot tweet. Now, now, bitch, what is happening? More? <laughs> it's one of those where you like you don't know where this is going. You see where it's starting off. Like within the first within the first fifteen minutes, I was like, "This is what is happening." <laughs> the first fit. It wasn't even fifteen. I looked at the clock. It wasn't even fifteen minutes yet, and you like it is too much going on already in the first 15 minutes. So what is to come? <laughs> the first 15 minutes was already crazy. Like what is happening? But it was really, really good. So if you um if y'all wanna if y'all into true crime, docuseries shit like that. Yeah, it is called The Girl in the Pictures. It's a new um True crime series, well, not series. True crime doc on um on Instagram. Not I say Instagram, Netflix. <laughs> on Netflix, it's really good, really really good. True crime. If you like that type of stuff, it got me when he came out of the courthouse. <laughs> I need that as a uh, a little clip video so I can have, so I can have that as a reaction. 
Baby, I had cackle. I didn't cackle nothing else. Everything else was too serious. But that part, <laughs> I bust out laughing because that shit was funny. He said, fuck all you motherfuckers. <laughs> I was like, baby. He went off on them real quick like, <laughs> fuck you and the state of Oklahoma, motherfuckers. Fuck all you motherfuckers. <laughs> I really need that as a clip. So if anybody is watching this and they know how to make clips from uh, Netflix, please send me that. Just that part where he says, fuck all you motherfuckers. Not the other stuff, but that. So I can send that to, you know, so I can send that to uh, Bette Midler and Macy Gray. <laughs> and all the rest of the cisgender people that are transphobe. Fuck all you motherfuckers. <laughs> I thought that shit was funny as hell. Hey, money. Thank you, baby. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Mm. Yeah, so if, if you don't listen to the podcast, people keep <laughs> mentioning it. Um, if you don't listen to the podcast, um, my gay child, Brandon, he has been on the channel a couple of times. I think I have a video of him and my dog, Oreo. My dog Oreo was humping his leg. <laughs> That's one. We have a video of us reading each other. Um, it's kind of controversial. People was talking shit in the comments because we were reading each other using like health reads, but we were reading each other. We were reading somebody else. And that's kind we have like a very dark sense of humor. And so it was kind of uh, at this at this time, I would like to say. It is kind of problematic. <laughs> yes. But at the time, I was really annoyed by people critiquing it because it was us reading each other. But anyway, so it's kind of problematic in that sense. Um, what else has he been on? I think we, it was another video that he was on too, but he's been on my channel a few times and just talking to Kiki. Um, he actually passed away um, last Saturday. We, we're not, um, the corners haven't um, got back to us to let us know exactly what happened. But um, the suspicion based on, you know, his body and based on um, a needle being found in the room, um, it, it was some type of overdose, possibly fentanyl. Um, not 100% for sure, but that is what the paramedic people said this is since they do this all the time this is what it looks like and so yes he also co-hosted um with me on Masha's Plate when we reviewed season one pose um let's see just season one so all the seasons that we did we did it's only three seasons so season one I reviewed with Brandon I, I my strategy for pose was to instead of it being me, me and Z, I would bring a butch queen on to just a fresh voice. And each time we reviewed each season, I brought a different butch queen on um, because you know, pose centers um, butch queens and trans women. <laughs> so I wanted to um, review it with a butch queen, and so brought Brandon on to um, review season one. Brian, my gay son Brian also known on YouTube as Africano Boy, um, brought him on for season two and brought my um, friend Tim on for season three. And we didn't get to, I didn't, didn't get to finish season three. I actually recorded them, but I didn't get to finish season three because it was so much death going on. My podcast friend and money's best friend, Nikita passed away. Uh, my mom had, passed away. It just was so much death going on. People were dying of fucking um, COVID and shit. It just was so much going on and I couldn't, I couldn't, um, it usually is easy for me to, um, edit two shows when it's, when it was post time. But during that time I was, it just was too much and I couldn't finish it. I couldn't finish the edit. We recorded it. <laughs> I just couldn't finish the editing process. And so um, I didn't really get them out. I think we got to episode four <laughs> of season three. 
three or four, something like that. And so, yeah, sorry about that. But yes, um, me and Brandon was really close. We were not, um, we were not speaking to each other, which is fucked up that he's passed away because I, I thought eventually we would get back cool. But um, at, at the time, we were not speaking to each other because um, he lived with me for two years from 2016 to October of 2018. And he lived with me rent free. And then when I was trying to, um, for two years, rent free. <laughs> Then when I was trying to push him to do better and get on his feet and, um, and um, you know, start being more responsible, <laughs> um, he just started being annoying. And so I had to put him out because you're not contributing to the household. You're not my man. You're doing shit in my house that I feel is weird. I was getting rumors that he was doing drugs, but because, like I said, if you don't listen, I talked about this on the show, um, but because of my relationship with drugs and my mom, my personal friends, they don't share when they're doing drugs with me. Now, I'm not the type of person that if I'm out in public and, um, you know, my friends are getting high or my, um, my friends are, I'm not going to speak on it, but in my house, I'm very, you can't smoke in my house. You can't do no fucking drugs in my house. I don't like that. <laughs> it's just, I don't, I don't like the smell of weed. I don't like, um, you definitely can't bring no drugs. I don't, I don't like the paranoia that, that I get when, you know, drugs is being exchanged in my house. And, you know, I grew up in a fucking crackhead, in, in a crack house, in a trap house. I don't like that shit. So because of that feeling, and my friends know that's my feeling, if they participate in drug activities, more than likely they won't tell me. And um, which is, you know, I'll take blame for that. That's cool. Um, but it, it, it causes a problem for me in my relationship with my friends who do do drugs because if I don't know when they are doing it or need help. You feel me? Um, but yes, he, yeah, he's 37. Um, but yes, we, we had fell out because um, he just started to do very, very disrespectful shit. And I am somebody who, when it starts to get disrespectful, I get violent. <laughs> and, um, And I told him, I said, if we're going to continue to be friends, you have to leave. Because we're going to twirl in this motherfucker. <laughs> because it's, 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 get, it's going too far. Um, and so, um, so we had got, you know, argument. Um, and I had, you know, I told him, um, motherfucker, this is the end of this. <laughs> we would be, our, our friendship needed to take a break. So I had blocked him. <laughs> um, like I said, because it was getting too di di disrespectful. Um, and he, um, you know, he was lying about just shit, just lying. Just, you know, when people are using drugs, they don't be in their right mind. So they'll be telling you lies. They'll be telling you lies to try to hustle you out of money. Um, you know, he just was doing a lot of weird, shady shit like that. And so I wasn't talking with him at the time. And so um, our he only has three motherfuckers that he really fuck with. Me, his childhood friend named Brittany, and um, um, his, his gay homeboy in Atlanta named Wade. And so... For the past 10 years, he has really rotated from us. Like in the past 10 years, he hasn't been living on his own. He has rotated between me, 
Wade Brigham. Me, Wade Brigham. It kind of, by the time he gets into it, with by the time I kick him out, he back friends with Wade. So he goes with Wade. By the time <laughs> Wade kicks him out, and like these are like one to two year periods, he, he goes to Brittany. By the time Brittany has kicked him out, he has made up with me. And so he comes back with me. And it literally has been like this for the past <laughs> 10 years. Um, and so um, this rip, um, this rip, he was at Wade's house. He was at Wade's. And so Wade, but all of us actually in this moment, because he is 37, y'all, um, um, we were kind of, all of us were kind of tired. <laughs> all of us was kind of like, oh, this is getting kind of late. This is getting kind of, hmm, this is annoying us. All of us, we were get, we were all getting to our wits end with him. And so apparently he was down bad. And um, he asked Wade, um, can he um, can he just come stay with him for just a couple of days to get on to get some money for our um, extended stay? And Wade said, "Bitch, you can come stay, but you're not living. You can stay till Saturday at three o'clock. Saturday at three o'clock, and you got to get up out of here." And so he came and he was hustling, making his money so he could get, um, you know, his um, extended stay little hotel. And so the, on um, on Friday, on Friday night, um, on the cameras, because Wade has cameras all over his house, so he can he knows what's happening. Um, he said he had one client um, at like one thirty, and then he saw the client leave. He saw, um, he saw, um, he saw Brendan walk him out. He saw Brendan go back to the room and he went to sleep. And then, um, the next morning, Saturday morning, he got up and went to like furniture shopping or went somewhere. Wade went like furniture shopping. And then he came back. Remember Saturday morning, Brendan's supposed to be gone by three. That was the boundary <laughs> setting boundaries you cannot live with me we already had this issue three times <laughs> in the past 10 years you cannot live here but got to saturday the third to figure out to hustle enough money to get you a hotel room so um he comes and knocks on the door and nobody answers and so the three ways that he goes back to sleep and at three, he set his alarm for three o'clock, but he overslept. And so he got up at like three thirty, and he went in there, knocked on the door, and nobody answered. And so he, put, you know, unlocked the door and went in there. And Brandon was laying on the bed, like, you know, like with his headphones in on his side. Um, and um, the fan was on because Brandon sleeps with a fan. Um, the fan was on, and he was like, um, he was like, "Damn, bitch, get your ass up! I told you." Um, you got to do a lot. And he went over there and smacked him on his butt. And he said his butt was cold. He was like, it was ice cold and hard down there. And he was like, he cut the lights on. And he said he looked at his skin and his skin was like drained. And because he was on his side, all the places that was on the side were filled with blood. Because, you know, when you when your blood is not pumping no more, your blood goes to the bottom. And so it was all on the bottom half of his body and it looked like bruising. And he was like, he started screaming and called the police. Um, now, another element that was crazy and wild is Brandon sometimes is two different type, type of um, clients that he has. He has a client where is, you know, he's a between, so he'll and this is a boy on boy, but he'll also dress up like a girl and have clients that like, and shit. You feel what I'm saying? This was one of the times that he had a client that he dressed up like a crossdresser, I assume. Because when Wade came in there, he still had his clothes on. Wig and fishnets and all. And so, and so the police come in. Now imagine the police coming in and you got this dead body that's dressed up into this alive butch queen house. <laughs> so you know, that's already alarm 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 and so wade was like oh no y'all not about to think i killed him <laughs> let me show you the dates and so um 
once the paramedic came, they could tell that it wasn't any kind of foul play, any kind of, you know, he didn't have any wounds, he didn't have any, you know, and then they had found the needle. So they knew it wasn't um, any kind of like murder or anything like that. And so, um, yeah. And so um, because I am, you know, I'm one of his closest people, of course, Wade calls um, me and Brittany. Well, Wade can't call me because I have Wade Block. Because <laughs> he's a messy ass queen that I don't live for. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but so Wade calls Brittany and Brittany calls me. And he, because Brandon doesn't fuck with his like biological family, he only fucks with us. And so, of course, they call all of us. He calls all of us and tells us. And I didn't know, I thought that he was still fucking with. You can say, I thought all of, you know, like I said, he would rotate from us. So when I was not talking to him, the norm was he was talking to the other two. But what I didn't realize is that he had basically burned all of us at the same time. And so none of us was talking to him. And so that's kind of, um, not, I'm not taking any blame. But it's kind of how he got in the circumstances that he was in, where he just didn't have any, anybody. And Wade was like, when he came to the house, when he came to the house on Thursday, he was like, Diamond, you remember how um, Brandon used to be? Brandon used to be big and buff. And, you know, he's like 6'2", 6'1", 6'2". And, you know, he used to be buff. He was like, Brandon weighed like at least 120. He was like 120 pounds at, at the, he said at the most. He was like, I had never seen him that small. He looked sickly. And I was like, whoa. Um, and he was like, um, he was like, so, but like I said, he had already, I had already told him that he couldn't stay here past Saturday. So I didn't mind him staying and making a little money or whatever. And so I was like, whoa. So I didn't know he was um, not fucking with them. So that's what I thought. I thought he was still dealing with Brittany. But when Brittany called me, she was like, I, I, I ain't talked to him either because he was disrespecting me last time I talked to him. Because um, he, he wanted me to buy him a ticket and I couldn't afford no fucking ticket. <laughs> so basically, that's what he had done to everybody because apparently there was some kind of drug thing happening. And he was just hustling, out, trying to hustle all of us out of money. But when we would say no, he would get like rude or disrespectful and get to, you know, cussing us out and calling us bitches and motherfuckers and, you know, all this kind of shit. So he had done that to all of us, basically, because, you know, he was going through his addiction and spiraling. Um, um, I, don't, I don't feel like I need to make a means. I don't do anything wrong. Uh, once we um once we bury him, I'll do you know what my religion says do. Um but yeah, so much. So extra, so extra, so extra, so extra, so extra, so extra. But anyway, let's get to talking. I don't want to talk about that no more. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so tell me y'all thoughts about this Macy Gray shit. This Macy Gray and Bette Bit Midler too. So it's not just Macy Gray. I know, you know, she black. So we like to talk about black folks. But it's Macy Gray, Bette Midler. Do y'all know the team? Or y'all ignored it? Or, you know, what are y'all thoughts? I like to see. Oh, you don't know who you don't know who Beth Miller is. That's interesting. Beth Miller misspoke. I don't think Beth Miller misspoke <laughs> at all. I think her her um her message was very clear. What made you think she misspoke?
if I, I can, um, I can read, read what was said. Um, so Macy, Macy Gray goes on, um, I guess she got a new project out or something. Um, she goes on, um, Pierce Morgan. Now, Pierce Morgan is an old white man, old UK white man, who has, for the past five years, been very, 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 very racist, very, very xenophobic, very, very Trump supporter, very, very white man <laughs> He has been very, very that person. And so what he has been doing on his show is every, 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 um, every guest because he is a transphobe and he this he he wants to add his attack to trans people he is asking his guest no matter if this is what this is their expertise no matter if this is the reason that they're on all of his guests to define a woman what is a woman <laughs> and so earlier in the month, I put it on my Twitter so y'all can um so y'all can see it. Um Diamond Styles. Um early in the month, he did it to another black woman, and another and the other black woman was like, I'm not entertaining that question with you. Cause it's not a question in kind. You're not, you're not um your intention to that question is shady. And trans women are women. So get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like she handled it like a boss. She was like, I came here to talk about this. I am not talking about trans people and their identity. I'm a woman. That's what it is. Why is he being messy? Because he is this type of person. Um, he is. Um, so he has been this kind of transphobe, kind of like Bill Maher that's been anti-trans and, you know, all this kind of stuff. Once was liberal. Now they're conservative type of deal. Um, once Trump did an office <laughs> and he asked her, what is a woman? And Macy Gray says, a woman is a person with boobs, <laughs> um, a person, a person with boobs. And she said, oh yeah. And a vagina. <laughs> she was like, I know people, she says, and let me say this. I know people are going to hate me for this, but I don't think that when you get like body parts, like you change your body parts to make you a woman. I'm gonna respect you. I can call you whatever you want me to call you, but you're not a woman, basically. <laughs> and so, let me see if I can. Okay. Too terrified to even say what they think a woman is. I know. I mean, what, if I asked you what a woman is, what would you say? It's a, uh, a human being with uh, boobs. I need to start there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the dictionary is quite straightforward. It's just a human being with adult female, yeah. right? No, a lot of people. Yeah, see, that's, now that's a really good thing. I hope you say that. And I'm not sure why, really. It's a, it's a bit like this whole issue of, of transgenders in sports. I think I support all trans rights to fairness and equality. Mm -hmm. But not where you have people born to obvious physical superior bodies mm -hmm. transitioning and then trashing the women at their sports. I totally agree. And I, I will say this, and everybody's going to hate me, but as a woman, just because you go change your parts doesn't make you a woman. Right. Sorry. You feel that? I know that for a fact. We're in an era now, basically, where you find it most public figures. All right. Mm -hmm. That's what she says. And to be fair, I'm going to play her retraction. Macy's getting ready to drop the latest album. It is called The Reset. She is going to be performing one of the songs off that album in just a few minutes. Macy, yes. uh, it's good to see you. Um, I actually feel like I've seen a lot of you in the past few days recently. Yeah. You were on the Pierce Morgan show, and there was a question about trans women. And this was what you said in part. 
as a woman, just because you go change your course doesn't make you a woman. If you want me to call you a her, I will, because that's what you want, but that doesn't make you a woman. Just because I call you a her, just because you've got a surgery, you can call yourself whatever you want. There was a wave of, of backlash that yeah. came as a result. Um, right. Just tell me where you are right now on that stage. Well, uh, I never, of course, never meant to hurt anybody with uh, what I said. I'm, not, I'm actually a huge, uh, I think it takes a lot of courage to be yourself, to, to go out in the world and be honest about who you are. And uh, so I think anyone who is uh, in the LGBT community is a hero. And that sets an example for all of us for that, you know? Um, so I said some things uh, that, that, uh, didn't go over well, but um, my intention was never to, to hurt anybody. I feel bad uh, that I did hurt some people, and and I think it's it's um, you know just about education. It's about conversation and, and us getting to the point where we understand each other, and and um, and, and that that only happens with you know I've, I've learned a lot through this, so I think that that was one of the reasons. Uh, it might have happened. This is a, a huge learning experience for me, and and uh, and I, I just have a compassion for for you know what I, I think you 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 can like I said in there you can call yourself what like you you whoever you believe you are, and and no one can dictate that for you or take that away. You know, I think life is an education process. The more you sit yeah. with people, the more you talk to people. It changes your perspective. So has, has your perspective changed, do you feel? I've, I've learned so much, and, and I think, um, you know, being a woman is a vibe, and it's something I'm, I'm very proud of, and it's, it's very precious to me, and, and I, I think that if you, in your heart, feel that that's what you are, then that's what you are, regardless of what anybody says or thinks, you know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, I've learned a lot, absolutely. And I'm glad I did. Well, now I know. Well, thank you for clearing that up. Because I think people got confused, yeah. and people sometimes you realize that through education, they feel differently about things. Mm -hmm. So, all right, <laughs> all right. So that's Maisie Gray. Let's talk. Um, I will. We'll do that a little later. Let's do Maisie Gray. So, like I said, I did a um, I did a TikTok video about this. Macy Gray. As long as I've known her, people have called her a man. I don't know. If you don't come from the 90s, you might not have experienced these things. But it, growing up in the 90s, when she came out, she was a six-foot-tall woman that didn't have Eurocentric features. She wasn't a petite woman. She had this weird voice. People always, like if you Google is Macy Gray a man or woman? Articles will pop up of people asking that. People would, they would talk shit. Now, now at the time, you know, as a queer person, I sympathize with that. Like, not that she was queer, but that, you know what I'm saying? That she was a woman that was outside of the box. And she wasn't this cookie cutter kind of regular, you know, whatever the cookie cutter look for a black girl was, black girl, white girl, any celebrity, any pop star, anybody doing music at the time, she wasn't this cookie cutter look. She was a black woman. And as a black woman, she was just somebody that I was like, yes, she had her natural hair. She was doing things that were not, that, that were, you know, that you know, 15, 10, 15 years later would be a movement. But you get what I'm saying? I appreciate her being this authentic Black woman with her natural hair, her features, and just, you know, her um kind of um kind of Janice Joplin flower child. She just was different. She just was different. And I really, really appreciated it. I really appreciated everything that she had going on. But there was these kind of, um, Macy Gray, there was these kind of statements that were being made about her being a man and being masculine. And, you know, she looked like a dude and 
all of these kind of things. And so it is quite ironic for her to be the one to come back decades later and gatekeep womanhood and use body parts as womanhood. When you and your physicality, yeah, you got a pussy, but everything else about you, people, because they don't fit in Eurocentric beauty standards, everything else about you doesn't fit in the pretty feminine gender, woman gender that well either. So you don't you don't even it's, you don't even fit in the number. For real, for real, yeah, you got a vagina, but everything else, motherfuckers is questioning, are questioning, are you a woman, my nigga? <laughs> they associated her with queerness because they didn't associate her with stereotypical womanhood. That was our perception. That was our perception and not her choice. Absolutely, totally, totally, totally. But not just that. Th I think that was us who was queer too. But I know dudes would be talking about, that's the man. I don't care what nobody say, dog. I hear, I will hear conversation like that. She was her at the same time as Dusty Child, the epitome of feminine black woman. So it's just ironic. And, you know, and I, I talked about this on the TikTok video, too. You know, it, it's only been like 150 years that um, they do the same thing with, of course. Um, yes, they, yes. They do the same thing currently with, um, um, what's the, Leslie, Les, what's the girl name? Leslie, the comedian, something Leslie. What's her name? Leslie. It's Leslie, something Leslie. A comedian, dark skinned woman, they wouldn't get her, they wouldn't dress her. Um, they do it with Meg, Meg, Meg Sierra, yes. Leslie Jones, yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. Les, they do it with Leslie Jones. Like recently, um, those black conservatives were calling Michelle Obama, yes. They they um because Michelle is 5'11. Um um, they use it, but Leslie Jones, they were on a show calling her apes. When she was saying something against abortion rights, like literally, literally Leslie Jones was speaking out, saying they're taking our rights away. She was saying that, you know, this doesn't feel like a, a very independent, free 4th of July. And some black, a black woman and a black man got on a TV or got on a news show and called her an ape, a, a great ape. The, the black woman said, only in America can a woman that looks like a great ape be successful in her comedian career. You should be grateful. This is a black woman. <sighs> so... It happens, like it's been happening. And so for somebody to, to just recently, 150 years ago, black women got to, you know, to be more than three fifths of a human being, <laughs> to be more than cattle, to be more than a product, to be more than property, to be considered human. So it's just, I, it's just, just kind of silly. I don't know. It's just kind of silly. Now, I, I can, every time I see in the comments, everybody say, y'all, y'all so sensitive and y'all, y'all get to bullying people because, um, because we have a different opinion. You can have a different opinion. Having an opinion, we like, what's, what's the saying? We all, uh, opinions are like assholes. We all got one. <laughs> yes, you can have an opinion. But if you are a public figure, not even if you are a public figure, if you are socializing and you decide to share your opinion, good or bad, whatever that opinion is, 
people around you are going to respond to it. If it's good, they're going to say, hell yeah. yeah, I agree. And if it's bad, they're going to say, oh, hell no, you tripping, da 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 and go off and have their thoughts and opinions about your opinion. It's not about being sensitive. It's not about, it's, it's, it's not bullying you. People are going to respond to your opinion, especially if you are a celebrity, if you are somebody that does it on the platform. If you decide to get on this platform, which I said on Twitter, yo, like they are literally stripping women's rights away. White men, not trans women, white men are stripping your rights away. And you get on this show with this white man. And only thing you can think about talking about is whether trans women are women or not. Make it make sense to me. Make it make sense to me that of all the things that you could be talking about to a white man, a white man that has consistently been racist, consistent, literally was getting kicked off his show, walking off his show for being, because he was being called out for being a racist. Like you're on this white man show. Why are you there anyway? But okay. So you just want to, you got an album coming out. But of all the things, you could be talking about your album. You could just be saying, I don't want to talk about that, Pierce, yo. I want to talk about my album. My album is for women. <laughs> you could have pivoted so much. And you too old and too, you've been in the game too long to not know I have any kind of media training on how to pivot in a conversation. You can't be that fucking stupid. Um, but you decide to let him bait you into this transphobic conversation and not bait you into, and, and even, and, I, I just don't get it. I just, I just don't get it because I, I, it doesn't make sense to me. There's so many things that you could have talked about. But can, also, K. Rowling, J.K. Rowling, they're white. Like, I don't, I don't expect much from white women. They have a history of throwing the rest of us under the bus. <laughs> if, if I'm going, if you're going to be honest and you are black, particularly a black woman, they literally have a history of throwing us under the bus to get privilege. Like, honestly, they just do. Remember when uh, the they were aligning with abolitionists to get votes? And when the men, when during the 15th Amendment, the black men could potentially get the right to vote before they did? And they was like, fuck no. And literally split from the abolitionists when they thought that they were not going to get the vote and black men were going to get it. And then when they got it in the 1920s, when they got it, they left black women on the wayside. Literally, Ida B. Wells was marching for women's suffrage and they put the black women in the back of the march. To this day, we celebrate women's suffrage for women getting the vote in the 1920s. Black women didn't get the vote in the 1920s. And white women didn't give a fuck about it. White women, when the, the, when the schools were integrating, they were turning over buses of children. That's what white women was doing. White women were lying on 14-year-olds, whistling at her, sicken her husbands on them to kill them and throw them in Money River in Mississippi. That's what white women were doing. White women were spitting on children, nine-year-olds in Little Rock. When she, a nine-year-old when she was trying to go to school, white women were spitting on her. 
So white women were doing. So do you think that J.K. Rowling, as a white woman, is it far-fetched to understand that she is going to be a, a turf? It's not really far-fetched to me. I don't expect anything from them. Nothing. You you find a few of them that's like, cool. You find a couple. But be around them long enough. You will see. You will see something. <laughs> So, um, but it's, you know, I, because I expect more from black women because we have been on the front lines of, um, of so many, um, people's fights, including theirs, black men, um, pride, just so, just so many things. So it, it just feels like it would be an easy connection to make, and I don't understand why she didn't make it. Um, and two other elements that I, I find quite interesting. The Butch Queen response to this, these situations pull out their, um, their transphobia too. Because it was so many queer... I expect it from the cishet people, but... It was so many queer people supporting. Oh, this is just her opinion. And that pisses me off coming from minority people. Because when it comes to your shit, when it comes to you being oppressed, it is very easy for you to respond to people's negative opinions about you. Because you can immediately, immediately see how it affects you directly. Opinions are opinions, but opinions literally affect the politics of the world. Like literally, opinions. <laughs> so when people respond to opinions, it's not them being sensitive. It literally is a life or death situation. It, it leads to disenfranchisement. It leads to discrimination. Opinions lead to things. So they're never just opinions. <laughs> oh, you don't have to care about what people think of me. Yes, I do. When I'm on the fringes of society, I do. Because it could mean my next meal. It could mean my next job. It could mean whether I have a place to stay. People's opinions could mean a lot of things. And if you're saying things publicly that can sway people's opinion against me, it was people's, queer men, it was people's opinions about homosexuals, beliefs and opinions and ideas and, and propaganda about homosexuals that let them sit back, Reagan and the Catholic Church and other sit back while y'all were dying of AIDS without even trying to help y'all. It was their opinions that was leading to that lack of movement. When y'all was overpacking hospitals, like like what happened was happening with COVID, when queer people was overpacking hospitals, when oh, when black women was getting HIV, and literally lesbians and lesbian organizers had to turn their clubs into makeshift care facilities for black women with HIV, people's opinions was the reason that we have to organize for each other. Because the government wouldn't step in. Because people's opinions were saying, oh, that's just the gay people disease. That ain't our problem. That was their opinion. That's just their opinion. But that opinion was killing you motherfuckers. Killing all of our people. Letting our people die. Opinions. Opinions are never just fucking opinions. It pisses me off when people say that because they know better. They're just saying it. They just want you to, they want you to shut up the fuck up. They want to, when, when you set boundaries for people, when you set boundaries and say, you know what? I don't want you to talk to me like that. Or I don't want you to say these stupid ass opinions. I don't want you to harm me in this way. When you set boundaries, people get offended by boundaries because they want to be free to harm you. 
They want to be free to disrespect you. They want to be free to say whatever they want out of your fucking uh, their mouth about you and you not respond at all. They want the least amount of resistance from you because you don't deserve respect because you're not a woman. You don't deserve respect because you're not a heterosexual. You don't deserve respect because you're not a white person. You don't deserve respect because you're not a male. You don't deserve respect because you're not rich. You're poor. You don't deserve the respect because you live in the ghetto. You don't deserve respect because you are uneducated and you had to go to a community college and I had to, and I got to go to Harvard. I don't give a fuck about your little stupid ass degree from this community college. I, got, I went to an Ivy League. You don't deserve respect. So I can have whatever opinion I want from you. You don't deserve respect because you got pregnant. I had my I had my children when I was married and I was and I was almost 30. Married in my white gown. You had a baby at fucking 16 in high school and now you're on welfare. You don't deserve respect. Don't get offended. This is just my opinion. And I'm just stating facts. All of you motherfuckers, y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't know any better. Y'all, y'all came up in, in broken homes with no fathers in the house. But this is just my opinion. And I'm just stating facts. If you weren't out here slutting, you wasn't out here getting drunk and having sex with random men, you wouldn't need an abortion. If you were classy like me, you wouldn't need abortions. That's just my opinion. You all see what I'm saying? How these opinions can lead to so much shit. These, these stupid ass fucking opinions because they're, they feel like they are better than you or they're above you or... Um, They want to keep you out of whatever circle they um, think that they're in, whatever kind of privilege that they think they they have. And these opinions leads to people's harm. These opinions about abortion is going to lead to people dying with babies that they should have not let come to term. So Macy Gray, if I'm if I'm gonna be really honest, I really do. I'm just talking about this because this is a, a, a current trans issue. But Macy Gray, I do not give a fuck about you, bitch. I don't give a fuck about you at all. I, I ain't heard no good music from you since the '90s. Try to walk us, try to say goodbye, and I choke. Try to walk away, and I stumble. Though I try to hide it, it's clear my world crumbles when you are not near. That's the song I liked, and that came out in the 90s. That's the last thing. I really don't care. This album is going to flop. And if this was a a publicity stunt, this was the wrong one to do. Silly. I I think the last time I seen you was in for color girls when you was doing abortion when you was doing your character was doing an abortion on for color girls first and last song that i ever listened to on purpose yes it's like mm. so girl i really don't care and also trans people there is a lot of trans people who think like Macy Gray. They won't say it publicly, but they do. There is a lot of your friends who do not think of you as your gender and they respect your pronouns, they respect your name, but they don't think of you as your gender. They just don't say it publicly because it's not politically correct to say now. Things have shifted. We've shifted the culture a little bit to where there is a little bit of shame and they know it might be a little bit of backlash, not only from us, but from other people about being transphobic. The culture, just a little bit, not a lot, not a lot of, um, not a lot of stuff, but um, not a lot of movement, but but just a little bit. The culture has shifted in our favor. Um, Pick me Monroe, Will. Flame Monroe, yes. Flame, 
Um, Flame is the Candace Owens of <laughs> the trans community. Um, you know, we know a lot of sellout motherfuckers. That's just a part of what's, what's, what happens. <laughs> um, there are a lot of trans people who align with cisgender people, transphobic cisgender people, and not just the um, not just the popular ones like Flame and um, um, Caitlyn Jenner, and you know some of your closest buds. They just don't say it. But you sit if if you if they are. Let me think. The ones that um, the ones that think if you don't have surgery, you're not really trans. That's what um, you know. It's the same transphobic ideal. It's the based in the same rooted idea that you are not what you say you are. Um, if you say if you're the type of Blair White, not I'm not talking about popular ones. I know. Those ones, they're they're conservative. They um they you know they're loud. I'm talking about the ones that are your Judy's, not them. If you go through with it, then I believe you. Yes, that say stuff like that. Or if you're a trans woman or man, but I'm just gonna say woman. If you meet a woman and she says, "Oh, I don't date trans men. Um, I I like real men." The root of that statement is internalized transphobia <laughs> because they are telling you that cis men are the real men and the trans men are the fake men. And they don't date the fake men. They date real men. And this is, you know, I, I, in 2010, 2009, I said that. <laughs> I said that. So I, I don't want to, I'm not. I'm not holier than thou, self-righteous, and trying to act like I haven't evolved. But that's what that is rooted in, internalized transphobia. That's people who say stuff like that, or or trans men. Oh, I don't. I only date real women. I don't date. Um, I don't date um, trans women. <laughs> it's the same exact thing. They don't believe that you are what you are. They only apply that to themselves. They refer to you as gay. Now, um, CL, I can see that sometimes, but me, um, I sometimes refer to myself as gay because gay to me is the catch-all. In my mind, gay, sometimes the context of it is LGBTQIA+. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when I say gay community, I mean the LGBT community. I'm just saying the quick gay. <laughs> so sometimes... Um, when I call myself gay or if I say I'm in the gay community, it's not because I think that I am a man who dates men. It is because I, the context of the word gay to me means LGBTQIA plus, et cetera. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So sometimes when I say gay, it's not because it's not about gender. It's about a whole collect. It's a collective word. Um, because they weren't trans until they peace has been removed. That's ridiculous. Thoroughly enjoyed watching Candace eat her up. And I should not have enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it, but baby, when she was wearing her out, Blair out, I got my life. <laughs> Sometimes if I show one of my relatives a pic of a pretty woman, they say, is she a real woman? My response is, yeah, she's a real trans woman. <laughs> um, I just say, yeah, she's a real woman. Yes, I use that as an umbrella term. Um, all right, so let's talk about um, Bette Midler. We're back with
trying to find that um All right, this is what Bette Midler said. And said that she was um, misspoke. I'm like, this is not a misspoke. First of all, it wasn't a, she didn't speak it. She typed it out. Was what she said accurate because she loves to lie? I don't know who we talked about. I thought Macy Gray was related to Bette Midler. How? <laughs> Um, who did Candace Owens eat up? Um, Blair White. No, I think she ate up Blair White. <laughs> if you if you go on her, she did a was it Ben Shapiro? I don't know what show she was on, but Candace Owens they did like a like a sit down interview together, and honey, she was wearing her out. <laughs> And I couldn't even feel bad for her because she's anti-black, she's conservative. Like I don't, it's her, it was it's crazy because they'll these are pick me people and they'll never pick you. <laughs> That's what's crazy, Candace. You are a bed wench to a white man. You will never be in the number. If there's a race war, they're getting you together, baby. Um, Blair, you are a trans woman. They are you're never gonna be in their number. <laughs> What do you think? Um, but anyway, this is what Bette Miller says. Women of the world, we are being stripped of our rights over our bodies, our lives, and even our name. They don't call us women anymore. They call us birthing people and menstruators or even people with vaginas. Don't let them erase you. Every human on this earth owes us. <laughs> and so, you know, that was, to me, that's not a misspoke. That's, you get what I'm saying? That's not a, I, I misspoke. She was expressing to you that she has a problem with the inclusive language that is happening, that's going on around this abortion conversation. <laughs> and so I said, how does gender inclusive language erase women or stop you from using women? Because I don't understand it because you still can use women. Nobody is forcing you to say birthing people, menstruators, but the people who do use that language, it is because they want to be respectful to people who may not identify as a woman, but still be affected and need be affected by abortion rights being taken away, and they might need an abortion too. That includes non-binary people. That includes trans men. They're, they, they are using inclusive language to be inclusive. That doesn't mean that you have to. That don't mean that you have to use inclusive language. Now, it will. I don't think if you said it, People will have a problem with it, <laughs> but it would indicate that you are for the respect of people's identity. But if you just use woman, it lets people know that you're just talking about women and not talking about non-binary people and not talking about trans men. But you can just, you can say it. Inclusivity equals exclusion to them. And, uh, and that's so problematic to me. Because, like I said, that, that has always been white women's problem, particularly feminist, liberal white women. Y'all have a problem. Y'all have a problem with understanding inclusion. I, I just talked about how many times they have thrown the rest of us under the bus. It doesn't matter. They will throw us under the bus. <laughs> and we are, I'm, I'm not talking about 
the Phyllis Shafleys of the world. I'm not talking about um, the Anita Bryants of the world. I'm talking about liberal white women, not the conservatives that are loud and proud about not just throwing you under the bus, honey. They're driving the bus. they roll you over. Not those conservative women, not them. I'm talking about the ones that we think are on our side, the liberals, the Gloria Steinems, <laughs> the Betty Friedans, those, those, you know, the, the, the ones that is like, mm, mm, I don't know. <laughs> You know, that would throw you under the bus. So, uh, mm -mm -mm -mm. I just find it just strange. What, what really makes it strange is that it is white men taking away your rights. It is not trans people. <laughs> that is what's crazy. Because you're talking about inclusive language? That's your problem. So inclusive language is your problem. The inclusion of trans men and non-binary people in the discussion, respectful inclusion with the language, that's a language part, with the discussion around abortions, that makes you feel erased? When you literally, based on the numbers, baby, you literally need all the numbers you can get for a long period of time. Because we don't know. Amy Coney Barrett is young. <laughs> she got a long time on that bench, baby. You got a lot of people. You got a lot of things to undo. And you need as many people on your team, as much as inclusion as you possibly can, so we can shift the tides of this court. Because if it continues to be the court that we have, we about to go back into fucking 1920s. No, probably when did Loving versus Virginia happen? 67? Whenever Loving, we going to stop there because Clarence want to keep his white wife. <laughs> I, it just doesn't make sense to me I don't understand it It is. I, I just feel like you would want to be inclusive it would behoove you to be inclusive it would be in your favor be inclusive darling but you are a rich white woman Especially you, Bette Midler. You are a rich, long-time rich white woman. Fame. You are shielded from most of the things that, particularly black trans women, you are, and black trans men and non-binary people, you are shielded from some of the hardship that they are going to come across in their life just for their identity. You are a rich white woman with a platform. Ain't nobody erasing you, sweetie. By using inclusive language. So it is ridiculous that you would imply that you're being erased, that women are being erased. You sound ridiculous. <sighs> ridiculous, 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 ridiculous. But yeah, I think it's ridiculous. Um, I'm not really reading anybody, but I'm talking, I'm discussing Bette Midler and um, Macy Gray. And just, you know, I, I just don't understand. I just, there's certain things that I just don't understand about people. I don't understand. The thing that makes me sad is a lot of cis black women feel that way. 
Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. And I don't really care if you feel that way. I, I already kind of think it. Like I just said, I think they, I think, I think people secretly, they just respect you. Like, I feel like, but now this is where I kind of, I don't know. This is like my, con I don't know if it's controversial. I don't know what the fuck. I don't care, but this is um, my mindset. This is the problem with assimilating into whatever the larger culture is. That that strategy, whatever the strategy of assimilating, whether it be white people assimilating into blackness. Oh, we want to be exactly like white people. We want to dress how they dress. We want to talk how they talk. We want to do all the things that they do to show them that we could be exactly like them. That strategy, I get it. I get why it makes sense. But that strategy affirms them as the standard. That is a problem. And as trans people, I know we are transitioning to the gender that we, you know, uh, uh, that we feel is affirming. But I think we need to divest from that. I think we need to start being okay with being trans. Period. Now, like I've said many times, acknowledging that you are trans, like you, you see a lot of trans people say, I don't even want to be trans. I just want to be a woman. Mm, see, that, I feel like that is a problem because that's when they can say, you're not exactly like me. But if you, when I say that I'm a trans woman, that literally distincts me from you. When I say trans woman, that that literally tells you what I am. Like it, it gives you not every detail about my life, but it gives you enough information for you to know that I'm letting you know that I'm not cisgender. It's letting you know that I'm letting you know that there is a difference between me and a, and a cisgender woman. So anybody who is saying I am a trans person is acknowledging that difference. We're not saying that we are exactly like you. I don't know many trans people. Now, I'm not saying I don't know any, but I don't know many trans people that are out here like, we are exactly like cisgender people in every single way. I just haven't, you know, of course we're going to, there are going to be some similarities, undeniable similarities, baby. We dating the same, your husband, ask him. <laughs> we dating the same niggas. When I go out in the world, I'm dealing with the same misogyny. There are some similarities, but there are some undeniable differences. There are. I know that you you grew up as a little girl. I know that you had a period. I, you think I don't know that? Do you think I want a period? <laughs> Quiet as a cat. Do you think I want that? Look, you know, I, it's it's biological nature is a beautiful thing. But do you think I, Diamond Style, want a period? I don't. Now, I, I, I bet there might be some trans women that want to experience all of that. This ain't one. This ain't one of them. I don't want none of that. I don't want none of that. There's some trans people that are like, oh, oh I, I, I talked to like a trans woman decades ago and she was like, oh, I'm I am cisgendered. I'm, I'm just a woman with a defect. And she was talking about her penis. The penis was the defect. <sighs> okay. <laughs> okay, man. Cool. But I'm not that lady. I'm not, I'm not that, I'm not that type of person. There's nothing delusional about me. There's nothing delusional about me. I know what's going on. I know what I was assigned at birth. I know. I'm actually proud of it, kinda. I think it informs my womanhood. I think it's something that it, it, 
it makes me sensitive to um, little black boys. And I think I think they need a, a level of sensitivity. But my strong ass motherfucking femininity makes me sensitive to little black girls too. So I think that that nuance in me that is straddling that line of that gray area informs me of so many things that you cannot relate to as a cisgender person who was assigned a, a gender at birth and lived and you and that was okay with you. There's a certain level of information that that experience gives me that you can never relate to. Just like you being a cisgender girl and growing up as being reared as a cisgender girl, all the things that comes with that, the danger of it, the, the, um, the vulnerability of it, all those things. I didn't experience that. And so that gives you a unique history in the world that I understand that I don't know. But at, at 21, 30, 40, there was a lot of shit that I had in common with other 21 year old girls. There was a lot of shit that I had in common with other 30 year old women when I was 30. I'm 41 now. There's a lot of shit that I got in common with 41 year old women. When it comes to how we relate to the world. Are we, do we have exactly the same histories in the past? No. But there's a lot of other shit that happened to us that's very similar. So I just don't know many trans people. I'm not saying all of us cuz there are some look, every fucking demographic got some fucking looney tunes. <laughs> I look, I know crazy ass motherfucking um Folks, <laughs> I want to be ableist, but I know it's some people with some um, unique perspectives of themselves and their transness and of the world that I'm like, I don't, I, I don't fuck with that shit. I don't know what that that's about. I can't explain it, but they are outliers. They are not the norm in our community. And I know for the people that I know, the trans women are not trying to erase cis women. They're not trying to um, um, uh, replace them. There's extremists in every sector. Absolutely. Um, it's a lot. We have simulated just. So, you know, there's some people who that's how they cope with their gender identity. This is a defect <laughs> that I got fixed. So, and, honey, okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's it. That's all. That's all I got. We're not trying to erase you. Um, I don't give a fuck if you think I'm a woman or not. I don't really give a fuck. You can have that opinion. Just don't let that opinion stop me from living. I don't give a fuck if you think I'm a man. Cool. You think I'm a man? Cool. I don't give a fuck. Are you going to stop me from getting a job because you think I'm a man? No? Okay, then continue to think that I'm a man. <laughs> Are you going to affect my money if you think I'm a man? You're not? Oh, cool. Continue to think I'm a man. All right, baby. Cool. I really don't give a fuck. Only time I give a fuck is when you can affect my world. And a celebrity going on a busy fucking platform with a bull, uh, you know, a figurative bullhorn saying that shift the culture in, to being negative to me. So I'm going to have something to say about it. <laughs> I'm going to respond to it. And it's not me being sensitive. It's me just responding, sharing my thoughts period. But, 
you know, there's a lot of people who I don't, you know, I'm, you know, it's, it's a lot of people, <laughs> you know, that I, I, I know for a fact you don't, you don't affirm me in your brain. I know for a fact you don't, but you're just being cordial. You're just being nice. You're using the right pronouns. You're using my name. Or you're using my name because you don't know my old name. <laughs> you, you didn't meet me when I was young, so you don't know my old name. So you can't be like the rest of the trans girls that you met when you were younger before they transitioned and you call them by their old name. You don't know my old name because I transitioned at 13 and you met me when I was fucking 29. So my name been Diamond forever. <laughs> For all this time. So you don't even know my old name. It's so many things, so many elements of how people break their neck to um, share their opinions and expect you not to say anything. We're going to say something. And I don't know about y'all other trans people, but I'm not going back in no closet. I, I Look, I ain't never been in no closet. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> I didn't have the luxury of being able to be in a closet. I've always been feminine. I've always been diamond. I've always been this person. So if if there was any moment of me even thinking that, ooh, I'm hiding something, bitch, I was in a clear glass closet. <laughs> Everybody knew. It was not a secret. But definitely. Um but I'm definitely not going into no hiding. I'm definitely not living my life in fear. I'm definitely not um, giving a fuck about Pierce Morgan or Macy Gray or um, rich white women like um, Bette Midler. And celebrities get on my fucking nerves because they're shielded from a lot of the shit that poor black and brown people deal with when they get on these fucking shows and share their political views they don't they don't actually get get the effects and see how it affects our lives Dave Chappelle can get on fucking Netflix and make up slurs like alphabet people they don't know when we get on the train the motherfuckers that listen to you and your fucking um and your special is gonna call us alphabet people Why you sit in the boardroom with the white men that call you niggers behind your back? Because you're making money like a work mule for them. So they're not going to call you niggers in your face. But the people, the layman that is watching you call us alphabet people on your special, they're going to call us alphabet people on the train while we're headed to work trying to pay our bills, while we're standing in the welfare office trying to get some food stamps, while we're standing in the line at the shelter trying to get some fucking soup to eat for that night. They're going to call us alphabet people and trannies and he, she's and um, transformers. I know y'all don't heard that before. Transformers. Whatever fucking word you don't fucking made up for us. It is, we are going to get the effects of it. Not you. You're going to sit in your, um, you're going to sit in your little mansion in Ohio. Creating more trauma for us while we sitting on a pedestal. The audacity facts. Rodney the voice. Who is Rodney the voice? They always saying protect the children, but not the trans and be children. Oh no, not them. <laughs> um, not them. Not th those are not. Those are no, 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 no. Not them. <laughs> Anyone but them. <laughs> those are little devil demons. <laughs> hmm. To be honest, I don't care about people's opinion. I'm me fully, I'm happy, and I hope everyone does what makes them happy. I'm not worried about people's opinions. Yeah, that's fine. I just know that people's opinions can affect you, can affect people, especially people on the, uh, on the margins of um, society. It might not affect you because you, you know, you're privileged enough to be shielded from it, but there are people who directly are affected by people's opinions of them.
I don't want to say protect the children. They don't actually do it. Baby, they really don't give a fuck about children because it is so many child sex trafficking rings that is connected to the foster care system that go underreported school systems that are, un and not, we're not talking about college. We already know that there is a college level e epidemic of um, sexual assault, but there also is a high school and junior high level of issues when it comes to kids getting sexually assaulted by students and teachers that go underreported. It's so many things that they don't give a fuck about kids. They don't care about kids. They don't care about kids at all. They really don't care about kids. They cut your food stamps. They they do everything in their power to cut the amount of money that the welfare queens can get when it's really more white people on welfare than black people. They do everything in their possible power to stop and undermine public assistance for people who have children. Any kind of any kind of assistance and help, they do whatever. Do they cut funding from schools? It's it's so much shit. They don't give a fuck about no kids, child. They do not give a fuck about no kids at all. Facts. So they just do not care. So. I'll adopt your child so you won't abort until you see a trans child <laughs> or a black child. Let's not, let's take LGBT shit out of it. Black children are not being adopted at the rate of white children. Black black children have a high rate of aging out of the system and becoming homeless, out of shelters, out of foster care, and out of um, group homes. I was one of them. Black children don't get fucking adopted at the same rate. There's tons of black children that's in in fucking these foster care and homes and shit being a, being abused. They don't give a fuck about kids. And black adults are often denied the ability to adopt. Fact, native parents right now are having rights attacked. Come on, right. There are socioeconomic limits. It's so many things. There's so many elements that they don't they don't give a fuck about kids, child. They don't give a fuck about kids. Da -da -dum -do 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 -do. <laughs> they do not give a fuck about kids. But all right. This is the last half an hour. What else? What else y'all want to talk about? What's going on in the world that y'all want to discuss? It is not nothing nice at all, not at all. This beautiful short you're wearing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A cute little owl. My shirt, Two-Face Joker. <laughs> Purple. It's actually like a long, um, not long dress, like a, it's like a, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a, um, it's like a, it's not super, super short, but it's like a, it's a dress length, but it's loose. 
I heard Monkey Pops was wearing out the white gays in Dallas at the Super Spreader event at the club in Dallas. I haven't been looking in the Monkey Pox situation. So I'm hearing, like, I heard, I, I was listening to this, um, um, this dude in San Francisco talk about it. So is it a, wh why are they making it seem like it's a gay disease if it's past, if it's not sexual and it's past skin to skin? Why are they making it seem like it's a gay disease again? Is Am I tripping? I, I haven't really looked into it because I've been dealing with other shit, but why are they making it, it seems like it's a gay disease? Can you show us the bag that you were talking about on Masha's plate? Um, wait, the um, the um, what are you acting black girl? I got two new bags. I'll show you my two. My two new. I already showed you the one that looked like a taco, right? Did I show y'all the one that look like a taco? I don't know. I read an article about it and it didn't make sense. Oh, I don't know. They're making it seem that way. It's spreading the fastest in the gay community. That was the only gay-related story I heard. They, the only other outbreak story I read was in New York State. The new one you discussed on your first segment. Oh, okay, I'll go get it in a few seconds. Um, oh, the LV bag from France. A LV bag from France? I didn't get no LV bag from France. Oh, I didn't get that bag. Mm -mm. I got, um, I'll get them one second. <laughs> so I got this bag. I don't know if I told y'all this bag. Did I already show y'all this bag? Look like a taco. Did I already show y'all this? This is like a metal. This is like a um, <laughs> like a magnet. This is so cute. I really love it. I think I already showed y'all this. Didn't I show y'all this? So I got this which I really, really love. It's so cute. Love, 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 love. I call it the taco bear because it looks like a taco. Don't it look like a hard shell taco? I love it. I love this one. So, 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 so cute. I thought I already showed y'all this. <laughs> I really thought I did. But yes, I love it. It's my favorite. It is my favorite new summer bag. Oh, oh! I got this too. Y'all know um, Bond Number Nine fragrances. I got um, New York City Night. Shout out to Javon. <laughs> Just because you're from New York, I'm gonna say shout out to you. <laughs> New York City Nights from Bond Number Nine. It is. It smells so good. Mm, 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 mm. I love, 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 love it. I love it. So yeah, this one, <laughs> I love this one. Um, so because I love this one so much, I bought another one from the company and that is this big, huge one. That's like a circle. <laughs> it's like a circle. I like big ass huge bags, so I'm not a petite bag person. Um, it unzips. Okay, it still has the little packages in it. And so, yeah. 
podcast. So I love it. Boom. I just, you know, I like unique shape bags, so that's why I like it. So boom, I like that one. Then I have, this is the one that I was talking about on March's plate. Yeah. This is just a tote that says funny acting black girl. Oh, it's even the not flip version. <laughs> but yeah, if you flip it, it says funny acting black girl. Super cute. Just a tote, just a normal little tote that I bought from um, my friend's um oh um y'all know him them um they are they have been on my show their name is um Zeandrian. I think the um I think the episode is, is black queer excellence or non-binary ex a, a gender brilliance or something like that <laughs> Zeandria Morris. Um, now, somebody brought the LV bag up from Paris. I did not get that one. What I got was this vintage Dior bag, which is a saddlebag, Groucho saddlebag that I have been wanting since like early 2000s. And it's vintage, and I never could find one. And I had went into this, like, um, luxury consignment shop, and they had this bag, and it was in pristine condition. And it has, it was brand spanking new, and it has its paperwork and everything. It has so many cute-ass fucking um, compartments here that I freaking love. Then it has, this part opens up too, and it's a whole other compartment here. Here, and then it's a whole other compartment back here. And this is just, and then it has this fucking cute ass <laughs> key that has Dior on the end of it. And it's like a dime. <laughs> that is fucking dope to me. And then the buckle also has the U on it. You see it? Yeah, so it's just, this is just fucking fabulous. So instead of getting the LV, I got this vintage <laughs> Christian Dior saddle bag, which, has, which is like a dream bag. This, is, this has been a dream of mine since I was fucking in college. There was this girl in college that I went to college with. I can't even remember her name, but she was like this plus size um, girl from Detroit, and she um, and she had these silver Christian Dior fucking glasses, and and this green olive um, ostrich leather. It had like these ostrich bumps. It looked like ostrich skin, olive saddlebag, and I said, I. My dream bag is to have a Christian Dior saddlebag. <laughs> and when I saw that one, I was like, oh, that is it. That's the one. <laughs> That's the one I'm going to get. Let me see what other ones. Oh, I can show y'all this one. Let me show y'all all of this while I'm sitting here. Okay. So if y'all watch Janet Jackson's performance, Janet Jackson had some, an orange hat on her Essence performance or whatever. She had an orange hat on that was made by this company called Essentials. And I, they're based in New York. And when I went to Pride this year, I said that I was going to the essential shop and buying me a hat because I love their hats. They're, they're pricey, but shit that I want, I pay for them. And so I fucking love this fabulous, big, huge ass motherfucking hat. It's my sickening. 
<laughs> I love it. It is very Kojic, Erica Badu, church lady. <laughs> so when I'm tipping down the street, honey, this motherfucker is a showstopper. When I was tipping, now it's different when you tipping in New York because there's so many fabulous people in New York that if you stand out there, honey, you stand out. And honey, honey, they were stopping me. Who? What's that hat? Oh my God, you look fabulous. Oh my God. And I was like, yeah, thank you. This is what we're going to do. And you can have it all the way down like that, which I think is so cute too. But it's almost kind of giving me Gandalf. <laughs> it's giving, you shall not pass. <laughs> but you also can turn it all the way up on both sides like that. Isn't that cute? Oh, my God. It's giving, I don't know. <laughs> hey. But I like it like this. Cocked a little bit. You know. Makes me feel fab. <laughs> so I love the hat. I actually ordered two, so there is a red one. <laughs> I can't wait to show y'all the red. Prepare. What's the uh, what's the little um sound that's popular now? Prepare to be sick of me. <laughs> Cause there is this red, it's it's like this, but the brim is straight. Um let me see if I can find a picture of it so y'all can see it. Their name is Essential. Let me see if I can find it. If I can find it. Mm. Yes, this one. This is the one I'm getting. This red one, the brim doesn't turn, it's just straight. So I'm getting this red brim one because it is fire. It's big like this, but it's red. So I'm getting that one. I already bought it. They're, they're shipping it to me in August. I want to rock the hat like my eyes are too big, but I can't. I can't wear. Hats. Oh, this I got my hat. My head is like fifty nine to sixty centimeters, child. I got a big ass head, and this is bigger. This is bigger than like I can put my put it on my whole head. You can, and they make it custom too. You can actually go in the shop and they measure your head and they make it for your head. Now that red one is the one. Yes, that's the one that I wanted. The red one is my. But they only had that one in stores. The red one was sold out. So I had to, he had to measure my head to get my made. Me too. I love red accessories. That's my favorite thing. So here's another one. So this is kind of plain. Y'all got me doing a haul video. <laughs> I got this for like $3 at a thrift store in um, Paris. It is just a woven, it's like a, it got these little details right here. It is a woven little blue and um, white purse. Isn't that super cute? Just a little clutch. A little clutch, you put something in it to make it sturdy. And, or you can have it on your thing. And I put, and I got bought this um, scarf to hang over it. And it is just a cute little bag. You know, just a simple cute little thingy. I don't know. I just thought it was so adorable and it was only $3 so I bought it. I thought it was cute. So cute. So cute. So cute. This one also is a vintage. 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 Gucci. You know, super, super bucket bag. Super simple Gucci bag. Classic monogram. 
I love a, a Gucci. Um, oh, this. Love this. This is a little clutch. It's beaded with these like gold beads in this little African print that I fucking love. Let's see it. Match my nails, honey, my marble nails. <laughs> now, this is a wood detailing that opens up like that. You can put your little stuff in. Put your, honey, put your phone in. Hi. Hello. Support. Hi. Hi. <laughs> super, super cute. So this I got from, where did I get this from? There is a store in the Galleria Mall. It was only like $68 in the Galleria Mall. It's called, God, I don't know the name. House of Bobby, House of Bibby, House of something, House of Bobby, I think. So if you are in the Houston, if you know Houston, if you're from Houston, um, you go in the Galleria. When you go to the top floor of Saks, come out into the mall area, and it will be on your right hand side, just like a store. It's like a little small boutique store. I think it's called House of Bobby. House of Bobby Gallery Mall. Here's some listings for House yes, of Bobby. Yes, House of Bobby. Mall Hi, Bobby with an I. Yes. Is they just sell little cute little fashion accessories. And I thought that this was adorable. Thought that this was adorable. Adorable, adorable. What other one? Oh. Now I this is kind of, I don't know. I just like this. It's giving granny, but it's giving sparkle granny. <laughs> it's just this, um, I don't know. I, there's something about this that I really, really liked. This this is made by a, a Black-owned um, um, purse maker, accessory maker here in Houston. She's, it's called Dynasty, D-A-N-I-S-T-E-E. -E. Dynasty, and I have a cup. I have two of her bags. Um, right, she takes us to church. Right, this is super cute. I thought she she just makes. I think she just makes really cute bags. I'm in Dallas, but I show sure gonna see if they ship. Um, Dynasty definitely does. Um, House of Bobby, I'm not for sure. I don't think they. I don't think they um, ship, but they're, I'm pretty sure um, how I found I have another one. I have a green one that I bought from Jay Bowling. Let me show you that one too. This is the green one that I got from um, Jay Bolin. This is the green one. Now this isn't embroidered with any beads. This is just yarn, like like a um, same exact style, but like a um, I don't know. It's like it's embroidered or something. Same exact style, but I got this from Jay Bolin, and so. I like this one so much that I got the one with the beads on it. But this one was green and white, and I don't have a green purse, so I thought it was fire. Then I have this one. This is, um, I got this one from Francesca. It was like $35. It's a little, you know, I like things that look like clutches. I like big bags or clutches too. And it can be, you know, a crossbody like this. But it's white and black. It has it's kind of similar to um 
like an African print. It got these little metal. It got these little metal dangly things on it. The dangles <laughs> and beads. These like little beads on it. Fringe. And it's just fucking cute. African. Maybe, maybe even native. It kind of sometimes it looks native. It could be African or native. I don't know. But I like it. It looks fire as fuck. And it makes me, you know, feel fabulous. And did I show y'all? Y'all know I showed y'all. I think I showed y'all this one because I had this one for a year. I think I had this one for a year. But y'all remember this one? This is my um, band up purse. Y'all remember this one? I think I've showed this one. If you you probably missed it. If you haven't seen, you probably missed it on a live, but I love this one. It's like a cylinder. It's like a round. This one is so cute. So because I love this one so much, so this is like a little handbag, right? So, you know, you you have it on your side. You know, do, 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 do. have it on your hand. Do, 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 All right, so y'all see how it looks. It's just a regular handbag, right? I love, 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 love this one. But guess what? The matching duffel bag. <laughs> That's huge as fuck. Now this is big. Huge as fuck. I, same exact design, but just big as shit. <laughs> <laughs> and it got the handle on it and it looks exactly like that one except it is huge as fuck this is my travel bag now which i fucking love <laughs> i now the um the purse i could afford the the handbag i could afford because it was cool but the big one it was always overpriced so i was like oh i can't get that that's too big but they had a sale for um, 20% off and I, and it took it down to where I could afford it. <laughs> so I was like, where it didn't feel like a hard thing. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get that one too. So I was like, yay, I'm gonna get this one. So that one I got from Banda, it's B-A-N, B-A-N-D-A. Banda, like panda, like a panda bear, but with a B, banda. And they are a village somewhere. <laughs> they send you a picture of the woman who hand makes it. It's like a village of women and they use sustainable stuff. And, you know, it's, it's almost like you're doing good for the community, I guess, to help them because it goes. And they give you an option to kind of tip them. All that kind of stuff. So it's really nice. I like them. <laughs> I bought two two bags from them, and they have come fast. They have come in quality packaging, and they just super nice. I really like them. But yes. <laughs> well, we're going with two bags. Well, darlings, we done went through bags, all my new bags. <laughs> um, I do have some new hats, but y'all gonna have to see them when I actually wear them. Um, some more new hats. I got those. When I get the red one, y'all know y'all gonna see that one. Um, but I bought a new brown one that's like a like a feminine cowboy hat, and it's brown. Um, and I got a, a very light olive green, big brim hat, not olive green, like a um, mint, mint green, not olive green, like a, a light mint green, like round, it probably goes out to here, it's like a round brim hat, it's so cute, um, but I'll rock that one day. It's been hot, so I haven't been really... Um, Rocking too many hats. That's a good thing about that big hat. That big hat is like, it's because it's made out of um, natural fibers and it, it has like 
holes through it, it's like the wind can blow through it and it's not a hot ass hat. But yeah, that's about it, y'all. Um, do y'all want to talk about the girl in the picture? <laughs> that are y'all gonna watch it? Do y'all want to watch it? And we talk about it next Friday. Because it just came out, so I know a lot of people haven't watched it. But I need to stuff fast. Okay. Yeah. So, all right. We'll talk about that next Friday unless something happens that we need to talk about. Um, it's on Netflix. It's called The Girl in the Picture. Yeah, it's it's a it's not like a multiple part series. It is a one. I don't know how long it is. It's like an hour, like ninety minutes, hour and a half, maybe. Um, if that, I don't know exactly how long it is, but it's just one movie. It's not like a bunch of episodes. And so, um, yeah, the girl in the picture. <laughs> so yeah, watch it, and we will discuss it on Friday. And make sure y'all thumbs up if y'all watching. Um, if you have just joined us. Um, I've been trying to release music every Sunday. I think I missed last Sunday. Did I miss last Sunday? I can't remember, but um, I recorded. Um, y'all know that the old fire ass song. Um, All of the things your man won't do. I'll do them for you. Y'all know that song by Joe? Baby, I want to do all of the things your man will do, yeah. I did a um, cover of that, and I think I'm going to post it Sunday. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I did my version of it, um, uh, and I think y'all like it. And I didn't change no words, so it's very tradey. <laughs> but I just wanted to do it. It's a boy song, but I just wanted to do it. So, but yeah, I put that out on Sunday. I'm trying to release songs. There are songs that I have in my archive that I'm. It's, I won't say that I'm scared to release. It's not scared. That's not the right word. It's just these are personal recordings that for me I didn't record anybody. <laughs> They're just songs that um I'm like, oh I like this um, or covers or originals that I've done that I just have and I haven't posted them. So I'm trying to be more open about sharing them. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'm trying to force it in a schedule. Just force it. So I I'm just getting over sharing them. Um, but yes, um, I'm going to try to release a number. I did a, a recording with Ty, y'all know my friend Ty, um, from In Trans Heart. Um, I did it, you know, she's a rapper. So me and her, I had a song that I wanted to rap on <laughs> and it's called Laughing at These Clowns. Uh, it's called Clowns, but the chorus is Laughing at These Clowns. Um, and I rap on it and she rap on it and we, we both rap on each verse and I do some singing in the middle. It's so cute. And I want to share that with y'all too. It's a, it's just a fun song. I'm not no motherfucking rapper, but it's it's fun to rap, even if you don't know how to rap. <laughs> um, well, even if you don't rap. Um, so I'll, I'll put that out soon. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? There's a song that I did um, called, um, let me see if I sing a little bit of that rhyme. Fairy tales in happily ever after, not you and I, why can we end like the fairy tales? I sung this like years ago on here. Fairy tales in happily ever after. Not you and I, why can we end like the fairy tales? And the chorus is, um, and the verses, um, 
and feeling Gretel didn't have enough bread to find her way back to your heart. Dorothy didn't have enough rubies in her shoes to click for you. So what can I do? Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's the best plan of them all? Cause it feels like I'm off with my head. Cause this man is a wonderland. Fairy tales in happily ever after. Not you and I, why can't we end like the fairy tales? Fairy tales in happily ever after. Not you and I, why can't we end like the fairy tales? It's an original song, and I finished the whole thing, and I'm going to share that, too. <laughs> it's a cute-ass little number that does a bunch of fairy tale metaphors about a nigga that ain't shit, that's leading you on. <laughs> and you gotta leave the motherfucker alone. Um, and then what other song? Um, yeah, I got a bunch of songs. Got a bunch of songs, so. Uh, yeah, y'all will hear them, so. It sound like a Miss Mississippi song. <laughs> does she got? Does she have a song? Does she have songs? I know she has an Instagram, but does she have songs? Um. Oh, P Valley. Anyway, but yes, I will talk to y'all next week. We will be talking for the first hour and a half about um, um, the girl in the picture on Netflix. So I will. See y'all next week. Bye.